because we are all now one family. We all believe in the same thing. We want to translate our beliefs into behaviors. Let us now see what we did the last time. As a recap of the first message, in order to build healthy relationships, we said we should seek first the wisdom of the Father. His wisdom is beyond measure and it's, it blows your mind when God gives you wisdom. Remember the person who gave wisdom in the Bible, Solomon? People had to live from other parts of the world to come to Solomon to ask the hard questions. And for each occasion, Solomon gave them answers that oversatisfied them. Number two, the Bible says, for as much as it depends on you, not on the other person who has hurt you or you've hurt them, you, the burden is on you. For as much as it depends on you, set up a non-toxic emotional environment. Set up what? A non-toxic emotional environment. And we call it HALT. Amen? What does HALT stand for? You don't have a program when you are hungry. You don't have a conference when you are angry. You don't have a conference when you are lonely. And you don't call a conference when you are tired. Can you forget HALT? I hope nobody does. So when you organize this conference, please, for God's sake, think of HALT. Have I created or am I having a non toxic emotional environment. If I'm not, I should do it. The third thing, and here is where pride is knocked out of the ballpark. Pride. Pride. I admit my fault first. When you have a conflict with somebody, all of us, including yours truly, we always think of the other person being the cause. We don't see our 1% in that cause. Maybe you just made a face, you twisted your face, and that caused the other person to do something. You have your 1%. In every human conflict, you have a part, the other person has a part. But the Bible says as much as it depends on you, not the other person, he said, make peace. That's why last week we recruited people who are going to be called peace makers. So this message is not only for you to have peace with God, but to be a peacemaker with our fellow human beings. Amen? Amen. And now, and we gave a statement that I wanted everybody to write. Once you start in this conversation, tell the person to disarm them totally. I was only thinking of myself. Again, pride will keep me from saying that. Only pride, nothing else. I was only thinking of myself in this problem. We all do it. Not one of us escapes that. Not one. You always think of yourself. You don't think of anybody else. You always think of yourself when you want to eat, right? When you, when you get up from, uh, in the morning, you think of yourself to go and brush your hair. So it's self. You cannot avoid that. So we are going to jump over that hoop by saying, I admit my fault. I was only thinking of myself. I was only thinking of myself. I was only thinking of myself. The last step we said was, I will listen now to the hurts and perspective of the other person. See, it's not the other person. It's you. I will listen to what is really hurting them. Why did you do this? Most parents, and I was one of them when my children were young, I never listened to them. This, they, they bring a problem. I, don't, I know so much. I'm, I'm, I'm the boss here. You know, I have, can we learn something new? Listen to their perspective. Johnny, why did you steal? Johnny, why did you not go and bring the, 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 the sugar cane or something that daddy asked? You are a very disobedient child. You don't listen to this. 
I did that so many times. In fact, I was rebuked. I had a missionary pastor uh, whom I was in his church for three years doing my undergraduate. They loved me so much that they came to Africa, paid their own fare, everything, when we returned. And I was screaming at Caleb. He got the brunt of me, and I'm glad he's forgiven me. And this pastor called me aside and said, you are too hard on Caleb. And because of that, all the others enjoyed. Amen? Amen. All the others enjoyed. He received all of the blows. Maybe that's why he became a soldier. Hallelujah. <laughs> to be tough. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. So, beloved, always think of the other person by asking, what, what did I do? Hurt. In fact, I have a lady who is listening to this message right now. Um, whenever they came for marriage counseling with their with the husband, I would start by saying, hey, husband, what is the problem? And when I turn to the wife, the wife will say, please, pastor, let me speak first. What did I do to hurt you this much? And the husband is disarmed. He didn't say, what did you do? He said, what did I do to hurt you this much? This is counseling which people pay hundreds of dollars. It's here for you for free. How to maintain great relationships as much as it depends on you. You start by saying, what did I do wrong here? But what do we normally do? We say, you did this, and you did that, and you did this. So if you come to my counseling, you will live satisfied. Because the Spirit of God will tell me to match these steps. When is the problem? I said, what is your part? What did you do? Because it's always the other person. What did you do to cause this? I was only thinking of myself. Praise the name of Jesus. So today we want to finish up with the last four. I will go through it very briefly. Again, let's not forget the purpose of this message. It's found in Matthew 5, 9, which says, God blesses those who are peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You are already a child of God when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you say amen with me? But you solidify, you make, you give everybody the assurance that actually you are a child of God because you are being a peacemaker. And when you meet conflicts, please let us be peacemakers. When couples come to me, my role, I tell them, that is not to favor your wife or your husband. I would see things from a biblical perspective. That's what I always tell them. Don't think that I will side you or you. I'm going to look at what the Bible says, not what I think in my mind. And that's what I'll go by. And in every instance that we've done counseling, that's how it has worked. And for some, it has helped them. Their marriages are blossoming. Amen? For those with stiff minds, hey, you know, I want my way and so on. Things haven't gone so well. And I cry my heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the first thing I wanted us to look at, point number five, I speak the truth tactfully. How do you speak the truth? Tactfully. You can speak the truth with arrogance. You can speak the truth because you think you're right. But the Bible says, don't do that. Speak the truth gently. I have found out that when I'm gentle with people, even when I know, I know that I'm right, they receive it much more than when I'm harsh. Amen? Amen. So I speak the truth uh, uh, tactfully. There are two verses to guide us when we want to carry out this truth, speak, uh, truth telling. Proverbs 12, 18. Can you help me read it? Proverbs 12, 18. Can you help me read it? Go. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Brethren, let's try it. The Bible says, a soft answer does what? Turns away. It works 100%. 100%. Try it. 
Let us not just know these verses and believe in them without putting our belief in behavior. Our belief in behavior. Our belief in behavior. We have created a, a non-toxic emotional environment. Now we are ourselves. You can't prepare for one goal to make peace at all cost. And I took a verse in the New Testament, Ephesians 4.29 from the GNT version. Please help me read it. Go. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words. The kind that builds up and provides what is needed. The person you are talking to is wounded. They are hurt. But you have taken the upper hand and you are saying to yourself, I must be the big boy, the big man here. I must be the grown up here. I must be the adult here. I must be the mature Christian here. Praise the Lord. And so, during this conversation, I will not use harmful words. But I'll be very careful in the choice of my words. The kind that build up and provide healing for them. Will you say amen with me? Can we move on to point number six? Can we move on to point number six? Some people want us to stay here. Amen? Thank you. Now I can see the smiling faces. That's nice. It encourages me now. Okay. Fix the problem, not the blame. The word blame can be spelled be lame. Be lame. B-E-L-A-M-E. -E. You are being lame. Okay, we all know um, there's no lame person. So I can do it. <laughs> No more, I will not be lame with my words. No more. From today. And God is willing to help you. <coughs> Brother, I cannot overemphasize Christianity. It's the best thing that can ever happen to anybody. Because we have one who is almighty, all powerful, all loving in us. Always consult him. If I could preach one message in all of my life, it is the fact that the Holy Spirit is in me to help me. When I run into any situation, I talk to him. We rather talk to people than talk to him in us. Why? Can we start the practice of talking to him in? Because when you're all alone, he's always with you. Amen? As pastor said, I lost my dad when I was five years old. I was raised by my mother who was both a mother and a father to me. And that's why for those of you who don't know, I'm very loving. Very. I go to the extreme. Because of my mother. Maybe if my dad was alive, I would be tough. Hallelujah. But that did not start overnight. I just told you my testimony of how the first son had the brunt of me. Hallelujah. But God over time has softened me. And right now, brethren, I tell you by the grace of God, it doesn't matter what you do. I'll brush over it by the help of the Holy Spirit. Not in my power, not in my ability, not in my thinking. Will you say amen with me? Amen. So, I fix the problem. I don't put a blame. Let me tell you about our marriage. Brethren, again, by the grace of God, our marriage is very successful. Very. Why? Because from the very day one, I told my wife, before we even went to the, um, the church to be blessed, I told her that as, a, as your future husband, we're not formally married, because she joined me here in the States and then we got married. I said, there will be no night that will go to bed when we are married, angry with each other. And you can ask her, every time something happened between us, God taught me this lesson a long time ago. I would always say, because my wife, ask her, she grew up not in a loving home like I was. She was kind of neglected by her. Mother died early. The father did not care because in those days, he didn't care for women, children. The women were, it's the boys. So my wife went from one house to another. 
And so she had a lot of hurts in her life. And God taught me very early that I'm supposed to be part of the help to make her whole. Amen? Amen. When God brings you together, is he calling you to be that whole? Those of my children come from my from our groins. We have five of them and two. If husbands or wives uh, that they will marry, if they're ever hostile to them, it's not because they learned it from us. We never curse them. Not one day. Not one. Do we have problems? Yes. You can't have a family without problems. But please, I told my wife, whenever we have problems, let's stick on the problems. Let's stick on the issues. Let's not stick on persons. You know what happens in homes, right? You have a call and say, oh, you, big head. The food you cooked yesterday was terrible food. Ha, look at how you're walking. Look at your dress. Look at this. We tend to deal with the personality than dealing with the issue. God is teaching all of us who are here, who are listening, stick on the issue. It's always an issue that brings up something. For instance, one person will say, let's buy a big car. Amen? A really big uh, car. And the one says, no. We're getting a small car. This car is fine. Now, stick with that. Don't go to, look, you are, you are very extravagant. You want to buy a big car for what? Huh? Look, you always like to spend money. Huh? 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 What, what kind of woman is this? How can you translate that? What sort of woman are you? <laughs> My God-given son. God, you are so good to me. What kind of woman are you? How can you say that to another human being that God created? What kind of woman are you? Because they spend money or the man. Brethren, may we say from today, help me, Holy Spirit. Repeat with me, help me. Holy Spirit. To focus on what? 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 The issue. Not there. The ah. No longer in this church. And those living, shall we focus on the person? How stupid? How this? How that? People, when they get angry, they insult people. And they expect those people to recover overnight. If you, 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 you have been cursing people, you have done a terrible damage. You need to go and ask God to forgive you and forgive them that you cursed. Because you've created a wound. See, it's much better to... I, oh, why did I slap myself so much? It's much better to slap than to insult. If you say you have a big head, or your mother is this, or your dad is that, or your cousin is this, or you, you are a stupid idiot. I know of somebody who used to call children, stupid idiot. And they think the children will just come out of that stupid idiot and love them. They need a healing process. And don't think about others. Think about yourself. If you have been saying, to, if you've said it to your children, you need to go on your knees and beg them that I used a terrible word. Terrible. Many of us have did it before we came to the Lord. If you insulted somebody, go and kneel down and beg them. Because you've caused an injury which is far better than, um, hey, okay, hallelujah. Stick to the problem. Stick to the issues. Don't be lame. Don't be. You're being lame when you start. You did that. You did that. You did that. Okay. Do we have a verse to support that? Do we have a verse to support that? Yes. Can we read that verse in Colossians 3 8? Wonderful church. Go. You must read yourself of all such things as these anger. Rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. You cannot do this on your own. You have to depend on the... Who is he? Where? Brethren, when people come and listen to a word like, Oh, that message was so good. Mm -mm, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear, I've taken my belief and translated them into my behavior. The way I speak and the way I act. That's it for Christianity. The way you speak, things that come out from your mouth, and the way you act. That's it. When people see you, 
They want to hear what you're saying. We put see you. They want to see how you act. And that will attract them to you. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Is that doable or not doable? Oh, yes. Doable. Let's go to point number seven. Point number six, I'll speak the truth tactfully. I'll fix the problem not to be blamed. Not to blame or be lame. And I'll focus on reconciliation, not resolution. What is the difference between reconciliation and resolution? Very simple. There is one major problem in every relationship. One major. That broke the camel's back. Find out what is the real problem. For some people, they take minor issues and bring them on the table. No, 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 no. What is the principal thing that is hurting you? Or what are the two or three things that I want you to bring down on the table? In fact, when you, when you listen to their hurts, you will even hear it. You will hear what is really burning in their hearts. It's not maybe the financial thing. And we're all others here. It's not even maybe sex. You know, it may be just the way you use your mouth. Things that come out of your mouth destroy people. And we take that for granted. I spoke. So what? No. I beg us. Me included. I'm not exempt. I must make sure that I don't speak out of anger, rage, malice, slander. But I focus on the main problem. If you have a tree, amen, amen. The, every tree has what we call a tap root. That is the primary cause of everything. And in marriage counseling, when we counsel with my wife, we were going for the main thing. We don't go for the side routes, no. What is the main thing? And once you unplug, lift up that main route, all the other secondary routes will go by the side. So you focus on the main issue and not on every single thing. Resolution is, okay, this day you hurt me. This day you said this to me. This day you did. No, we don't want to focus. We want to focus on the main issues. Because once you focus on the main thing, all those side things will pass away in Jesus' name. Number eight. God wants us to be his ambassadors or representatives. And that's where we end. Brethren, if you forget everything we've said about relationships, it is that God has appointed you and me to be his ambassadors. On Wednesday, if you come on Zoom, we'd like to know what ambassadors from one country do in another country. But do you know what? My wife and I go to our son in love's uh, um, building once in a while, and by it is the Nigerian consulate. Now, if you do something and you cut somebody or kill somebody, and you go into the Nigerian consulate, because I've been there when police, people were called when something happened in the embassy. And they said, that territory belongs to Nigeria. Right. Hello? Yes. Every piece of land where a foreign government plants its embassy, that place is out of bounds. You can go and take refuge there if you harm somebody. It is they who have to release you. If not, you can stay in the embassy for the rest of your life. And nothing will harm you. God has called us to be ambassadors in this world. Amen? Amen? And the chief thing he's called us is going back to reconciliation, relationships that Jesus came to perform on planet Earth. That is his number one thing. Again, I've said this, and for many of you, it behooves repeating. This book that I hold in my hand, listen to this, and I'm only going to give you a little bit of just scratch the surface. This book is thoroughly inspired by the third person of the Holy Spirit. He breathed into 40 authors. How many authors? How many authors? Yeah, 40. American pronunciation, 40. All right, good. All right, let's go. Now, these authors range from farmers. From who? Cattle readers to medical doctors like my beautiful daughter Grace. Hallelujah. Luke wrote two books in this book. The book of Luke and the book of Acts. A medical doctor. You're beautiful. 
Hallelujah. So we have the Holy Spirit inspiring. He selects 40 authors. Now listen to this statistic. It was given to them differently on three continents. This one book. Let's continue. This one book was written over a span of 1,600 years. One book. Everything I say is verifiable. And the main superstar in this book is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why the title the Lord Jesus Christ? He is Lord because he is God. He is Jesus because he came to save us. He is Christ because he is the only anointed one of God. He is the superstar of this book. Amen? Amen. And the only message that is of utmost value is the message of redemption or the message of reconciliation or the message of establishing re-establishing the relationship that mankind lost through Adam with God. Amen. And that's why I have a tendency to maybe after this series go back and let's read the Bible about its illumination its uh, prophetic utterance so you get to know these things about this book. That's why you should look at this book and read it with joy and with gladness. Every time you open to this page you say wow I challenge anybody on planet earth who is listening or will hear this tell me about another author or another book that even comes close of its more than 300 prophecies that were made in the Old Testament about Christ they've all come true except for one and that one is his soon coming to rapture us home. Tell me any other person of any other religion who will tell you my, my, my prophet or my this started and this is what he did. They cannot. They don't have. They don't have. They will not come. But one of my sons warned me when I'm, because I have the facts, I should be calm. Hallelujah. I shouldn't get on them. And I'm practicing it because I go out every day to jog and when I'm jogging, I meet people and I share with them about the message Amen. Brother Tanga is not here this morning. That is the wife of our beautiful sister there. And that's what I used. I talked to him around the track. And I said, brother, it doesn't matter what religion you are. Can you accept Christ? I wish he was here today. And he said, yes. And we prayed the sinner's prayer. Amen. Amen. There's no pride, nothing. You know, I'm an old man. I have big kids. I have a lovely wife. No, 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 no. My relationship with God. That's why when I read this book, you know why I read it? I read it on my knees. My wife sits on the other side of the bed and I sit and we read this book together because it's sacred. There's no other book. There will never be another book. It's also the bestseller. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And if I follow the precepts of this book, the principles, the concepts of this book, I will live a joyful life. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So, my beloved, I want us to read the last, I mean, maybe pastor can help me, yes. God wants us to be his ambassadors or representatives. So we'll start with Second uh, Corinthians 5, 5, 18 and 19, right? We had some discussion, yeah, we'll do 18 and 19 and then do 20 last, right? Okay, please, can you help me? Can you help me? Can we read it together? Go. God has done all this. He has restored our relationship with him through Christ and has given us this ministry of restoring relationships. Hold on. He has given who? He has given who? He has given who? You see, people hide when they say us. They hide in it. But if it's me, there's personal. He has given you and me you and me <laughs> feeble, weak he has given us this message oh. we are ambassadors you know when you have ambassadors coming from a foreign country they, when they move in their 
large limousines and so on. Oh, the ambassador of Cameroon, and you see the flag just going, you know, of Ethiopia, of, uh, of Iran, of, you know, and they sit behind there like this, an ambassador. You and I have been called to be ambassadors of the God Most High. Amen. Nothing comes to it. Nothing. No, there's, no, it doesn't, there's no comparison of your ambassadorship because you are not only going to be on this planet, you are taking people and showing them the way of eternity. Will you say amen with me? So, let's start with, in other words, go. In other words, God was using Christ to restore his relationship with humanity. He didn't hold people false against them. And he has given us this message of restored relationships to tell others. What are we supposed to do? Tell others. You are only a teller. Brother, when I go out, I receive all kinds of insults. In fact, I have a young man was sitting in a car and I tried to approach him politely. And he said, go, 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 go. Who is, come on, get out of my face. We will see all those things happen. I've seen others who have said, I don't want to listen. Yesterday, I was running, and I saw a gentleman, and I'm sure he noticed me talking to people. He said, oh, I'm not interested. I'm not what? Now, you don't go about saying, what? Why don't you want to listen to this message? The attitude we should have is, God, open their eyes. Hold no grudge against them. They don't know what they're doing. Is that not what Stephen said when he was being stoned? Is that not what the Lord Jesus Christ said? So you are wearing a badge of honor when you go and talk. But through it all, God has allowed me to lead 35 adults to confess Christ. How many? 35. Just going on my track and I will continue. So when I'm going, I'm going with the attitude. I'll meet some people who are like Brother Tanga and I'll meet someone who say, get out of my face. Who is this old man? Come on, get out. And you walk away quietly. Praise the name of Jesus. Why are you called a reconciliator? It's not a thing to laugh. Each of us wants to go to heaven with somebody that God has said. We can say, God, you see? Amen? Not the house I live in, not the cars, not the clothes I wear. Look at somebody I brought. That should be our primary focus as ambassadors. Before you go to heaven, you have led somebody and you are following up the person in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? And if you put it on yourself, you won't do it. But if you depend on the Holy Spirit, if you rely on the Holy Spirit, if you submit to the Holy Spirit, it will happen. Amen? Amen. Now, let's look at the last part of it. God wants us to be ambassadors or representatives. Now, listen to this. Can we read this carefully? Because the last part. Amen? Go. Therefore, we are Christ's representatives. What's another word for representatives? Thank you. And through us, through who? Through the church. Through New Life Fellowship. Oh, no, no, no. Through my post as, an, uh, as a school principal. Oh, no, no. As a farmer. Through you, the believer. God is calling you. Amen? Amen? We began this series of messages by saying, we plead with you to become a representative ambassador of God. Now, I've read the Bible many times, but this is what blew my mind about reconciliation. If you forget everything we've talked about this series, don't forget this part. Read it, read with me, go slowly. We beg you on behalf of Christ to become reunited with God. Hello. Hello. Help me, Lord. We beg you. We do what? Now, listen to this. If you forget everything else, don't forget this. God, when he tells us to do something, it is because he has done it himself. God will not tell you to do something that he has not done. 
The purpose for Jesus coming to us was to beg us on God's behalf. What did we do that God is coming to beg us? We offended God. Does it, is this natural? Please help me here. Is it like for somebody to abuse you? You are just and then you just say, oh, I beg, let's make peace. Does that happen? It doesn't happen. Because we all have that damning nature. You know, just rise up at once and you want to do something. What? You said this about me? I'll show you, Pepe. Right? Brethren, God came to beg us. Write it down somewhere. God came to beg me. Through Jesus to be reconciled. You know what beg is in? What's begging? Give me words to beg. Pleading. What other word do you have? Soliciting. What other word? Request. It's even softer, but that's okay. To beg somebody is to go on your knees. Can you imagine the God of heaven coming through Christ on his knees to beg you to become a Christian? That is the heart of Christianity. God came down to beg you to be reconciled. Even though you and I caused this problem. If you live with anything in this church today, write it down. Write it down. God came to beg me. Hmm. So if you fall into problems with people, that's why God says, for as much as it depends on be reconciled. There are some people who are so hard. That's why on Wednesday when you come, you ask questions. We will do our best to answer those questions based on scripture. If we don't know the answer, we'll go and do research in the three original languages, in Hebrew, in Aramaic, and in Greek. We guarantee you that. You've hired me to do nothing else but to dig into the Bible. We'll answer your question. It doesn't matter what. On relationships, don't talk about other things. If you go to other areas, I may not be able to. Do we hear me? Yes. Oh, pastor say I can answer all questions. No. Relationships. We have nailed it down. And the nailing down is begging. On your knees. God coming to beg me. You know what death Christ died? He died the cruelest death. Man's imagination is very wicked. For somebody to die on the cross, you have to be a hardcore criminal to die on that cross. Yet, that's where they chose God in Christ to die for you and me. Brethren, is this making sense? Holy Spirit, are you speaking in the hearts of people? Brethren, it's always good to say, oh, um, this. Brethren, you know when somebody, something's whispering in your ear, oh, this is too hard, Pastor. Oh, no, I can't do it. Uh, but how can? It is the voice of the devil. Did you hear that? You are lying, the voice of the devil talks back to you. You should just sit down and say, nonsense. I won't believe this nonsense. From today, I want to be a changed person. I want my beliefs to be revealed in my behavior, in the way I speak, and in the way I act. Rise up, let's pray together. I would like you to repeat this prayer after me. It will be put up on Wednesday when we have our Bible study. Please, don't just repeat this prayer. Pray it from your heart. Amen? Amen. I'm only begging us. Please. I wish pastor could type it as I'm saying, but that's okay. We'll say it slowly. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Fill, me Fill me with your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. That I may listen. That I may listen to your words attentively. To your words attentively. Obey it promptly. Obey it promptly. And follow you joyfully. And follow you joyfully. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. And what do the people of God say? Amen. Amen.